Welcome back everyone, and today we're going to be looking at seven cities and seven states along the eastern seaboard. Let's begin with Maryland, and I chose the town of Bethlehem, population 150. So before we get to this actual town, let's look at it in the Bible. In Hebrew, Bethlehem is Beit Lachem, or Beit Lechem, and it means something like the house of bread or the house of food. It comes up in many biblical passages. Rachel was buried in its vicinity. The book of Ruth, much of it takes place in the area, and it's the hometown of King David. Bethlehem became extremely important in the Christian tradition because that is where Jesus was born. And because the birth of Jesus, the nativity, took place in Bethlehem, it is associated with the holiday of Christmas. And this brings us full circle back to the town of Bethlehem, Maryland. Bethlehem, Maryland is a really tiny town of about 150 people. And not much goes on in this town for most of the year. But on Christmas time, many people who send out Christmas cards want to add a special touch, having the postmark come from Bethlehem. So while this small town only has 150 people, every year around Christmas time, about 3,000 Christmas cards are mailed out each day from this small town. Moving on, our second state is Delaware. And I chose Bethel, Delaware, with a population 171, also a small town. This is an old shipbuilding town where they used to build something called a ram, which was a flat-bottomed schooner. And Bethel can actually be identified as modern Betin, a large Palestinian village or city in the West Bank. Now, Bethel in Hebrew is Beit El, which means the house of God. And this is an interesting name because it's not quite clear in the Bible which God is being worshipped at Beit El. In Genesis 28, the town is named by Jacob, who woke up from a dream where he saw a ladder with angels climbing up and climbing down the ladder all the way to heaven. And he said, this is the place of God, this is the house of God, Beit El, which is a really positive kind of understanding of the name. But a few books and many centuries later, in 1 Kings 12, we're told about the split between North and South Israel and how King Jeroboam, Yeruvam, made Bethel, Beit El, a center of worship. And at Beit El, they were worshiping idols of calves and bulls. So while indeed it was a house of God, it wasn't exactly the house of God that Jacob had. Moving on to Virginia, I chose a place called Zion Crossroads, which lies at an intersection of Interstate 64, which was built in the 70s. Now, as an interstate stop, it has a lot of typical restaurants. It has a lot of typical motels. It also has one of Walmart's super centers, if not the biggest super center, which is where all the Walmart goods begin and then they get shipped around the country. So it's good to be at a nice crossroads. Now, the Hebrew term Zion is Zion, and Zion refers to many things, none of which are clear, but they all relate in one way or another to Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Zion could either be a hill, Mount Zion, it could be the temple, it could be the inner part of the temple, or it could be all of Jerusalem itself. So we're not entirely quite sure what Zion is exactly, but we know that it's in or is around Jerusalem itself. For our fourth town, I chose the town of Edrei in West Virginia, which is yet another quiet town, this one in the hills of West Virginia along Route 219. Now the town of Edrei, which in Hebrew is Edrei, was in the region of Transjordan across the Jordan River, and it belonged to King Og. Og was one of the big giants in the Bible, and Og was conquered by Moses, Moshe, and the Israelites before they entered the land of Canaan. Canaan. Now, Edrei is located in the modern city of Dara, which is sad because war has gripped the city of Dara for more than 10 years now, the Syrian civil war, and it could be said that the war actually started in Dara where some small events really combusted and became a civil war. So prayers and hope for peace to this biblical city. For the fifth town, I chose Goshen, Kentucky, population 909, which by our standards now is pretty big, but a small town known for its thoroughbred horses, and there are a few horse ranches there that you can go riding. Now, when the children of Israel moved down to Egypt to be with Joseph, they lived in the place called Goshen. And Goshen was good for them because they had a lot of cattle. 
and they actually lived there a few generations later to the pharaoh that did not know Joseph and the ten plagues in Egypt. And there's this even cool line in the plague of hail where we're told that all the hail comes down. It came down upon Egypt. It was really terrible. And then we read in chapter 9, verse 26, only in the region of Goshen where the Israelites were, there was no hail. So you can kind of imagine that it's almost like where it's raining on one side of the street. In the rest of Egypt, it's hailing, but not in the region of Goshen. Now, we don't really know exactly where Goshen is. There have been a lot of suggestions, but most likely people place it in the eastern Nile Delta and try and find a region in that area. Moving on to North Carolina, which is my favorite for this list, we come to Ophir with a population of 1343. It's a small town within the, and I hope I pronounce this right, Uwari Forest. And because it's in this forest, this national forest, there's a lot of boating and RVing and camping and hiking all in this area. This town was settled in the 1800s during a gold boom in the state, and that's why it got the name Ophir, because there was a town in the Bible called Ophir, and that's where King Solomon, Shlomo, got his gold. That's where he received all his wealth from. And so you can imagine that there was this town with all this gold in the Bible, so it made sense that the town in North Carolina, which is looking for gold, that's where it got its name too. Now, we're not really sure where Ophir was. There have been a number of interesting suggestions along the Red Sea. There have even been some far-out suggestions as far as, as India, but um, we're not entirely sure where it was. My guess is it was along the Red Sea, and that's probably where the gold came from. Let's move on to the last town, which is Sharon, and it's in South Carolina. It's a small town of 494 people with a nine-building downtown that is on the National Register of Historical Places. And it even has one of those old-style department stores, even though it's not being used as such. But back in 1913 when it was built, it was one of those cool multi-level department stores. Now, the name Sharon comes from Biblical Sharon, which is the name of the coastal plain in northern Israel, which is a really beautiful place, and it's mentioned as beautiful in a number of passages in the Bible, but it really wasn't necessarily good for farming or living because of things like the amount of sand in the soil. But this all changed in the last one or two centuries or so when, with modern irrigation, this area started being used for citrus fruits and other kinds of fruits, and that's where you get those famous Jaffa, Jaffa oranges from. So the beautiful plain of Sharon is where this town in South Carolina gets its name. So, the, so that's it. These are the seven towns in seven states on the eastern seaboard and a little bit inland. And moving on, next time we're going to be doing the southeast and the south itself in the United States. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you soon.